Is Nikola Jokic the most skilled offensive player ever? It's not meant to be clickbait. It's truly something that I ponder. I'm not saying he's the most accomplished. That's MJ, LeBron, Kobe. Not the best shooter. That's without a doubt Steph. Four passer. That's Magic. He's not Kevin Durant with the hezzy pull-ups and turnarounds. But think about this. How many of those guys could do practically all of those things at a supremely high level? From a skill standpoint, Magic couldn't shoot. Steph's passing doesn't compare. KD might have the biggest bag ever, but he's never had an entire offense run solely through him. The more I think about it, the more I think by the end of his career, we might honestly think Nikola Jokic is the most skilled player ever. A seven-foot center who can run an entire offense through him is essentially the point guard, shoot threes, post up, dribble, and pass with the best of them. Averaging 26 points, 14 rebounds, 8 assists, Nikola Jokic is having an another unbelievable MVP-type season. And you know what? I thought no better way to evaluate him, even by just showing one game, to not say that I'm cherry-picking or to show you all his highlights or best moves of the season. I want you to kind of just watch one game from his perspective and see how extraordinary he really is. Let's look at this Clippers game that went into overtime a few nights ago where you could really see, again, a little part of all Jokic's game. First of all, coming off a little cross screen here, and if you're going to play him single coverage in the post, he's just going to go get a bucket, right? He's so good with that crab dribble, so good getting to his left shoulder hook. And then, you know, I talked mentioned Magic Johnson. I mean, this is just it's beautiful basketball. He runs a fast break with the best of them. Think about the, as a guy that came into the league as a plodding, slow-footed center that they thought couldn't move at the NBA pace. I mean, now, yeah, he's coming off pin downs to shoot threes. I mean, this is unreal. You know, this is, I mean, Dirk stuff. Yeah, he, he's right there in terms of the kind of plays you run for a guy like Dirk. Look at him again, running the break, getting out ahead, and I just want you to see how smart. I mean, this guy, he is Tom Brady of basketball. I mean, he sees everything. He's running ahead. He sees he's ahead of Zubats. He sees he's got man trying to guard him, so he's going to point right to the corner so they can make that entry pass. He's going to call for it with his right hand. He's going to turn real quick, and yeah, that pass, not his best. He even admits here he should have thrown it up in the air to Aaron Gordon, but I just wanted you to show an example or to see how he really sees everything and, again, takes the accountability. Look at him here, coming off a 5-4 side pick and roll. I mean, how often do you see that in basketball? Again, a center that can handle in ball screens, can handle in transition, a little no-look pass to Jeff Green in the corner who doesn't knock it down. Again, showing these because 10 assists in this game, he easily could have had 15 if his teammates didn't fail him. He's playing on a Denver team without arguably the other best two players on the team and Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr., and they're still thriving. I mean, this guy is the best passer ever from a big standpoint for sure, and he's right up there, honestly, with anybody at any position in terms of passing pure ability to just pass the basketball. If you're ever on the high side of your man, he is dropping that pass over the top and getting you layups. Again, even though Aaron Gordon tricks off that layup, if you get up high on him, he is going to find you. Here again in the post, going to work, and look how he just always has vision. He knows where all five defenders are at all times, waiting for Terrence Mann to get out of there, seeing Eric Bledsoe come to dig, pulling it back, and then waiting for Bones Highland to drift a little bit out of the line of sight of Bledsoe so he can find him right at the top for an open three. Here we're going to see play they like to run a little against the grain back pick action for him. And just look how, again, skilled he is. How many players have this kind of footwork, this kind of skill in the low post to just turn quickly and realize, hey, I might have had the quick left shoulder hook, but Zubac is coming to play that. So I'm going to show him the ball. He's going to now give me a little angle to get to my left hand, and I'm going to go right through and finish with my left hand off the glass. He has phenomenal touch with both hands around the basket. Top, top notch at pretty much everything. Here you see a little example of the tap pass that he's so good at as well. The guy has the best hands in basketball. And he does stuff like this just routinely, just seeing exactly how a play is unfolding, what's going to be open, making the right read just about every single time. Here again, you see an example of the patience on the short roll. 
He's not the hardest roller in the world, but he finds ways, regardless, to get a little piece of canard, get the ball in the pocket, and now all it takes for him is one dribble to elevate, and again, that great touch on the little push floater is pure. Here, again, you see an example of just how freaking skilled this dude is. Here is a play that Nuggets like to run where they kind of swing it to him to have an inverted ball screen, a small setting a ball screen for him. And as he sees Serge Ibaka start to go underneath the screen, all he's going to do is jab with his right foot, get Ibaka to start going that way, and then hoist it up there. His shot, a little unconventional, shoots it kind of above his head, but that's what also makes it unblockable. His form is absolutely pure. His stroke, perfect and the guy is making shots at a tremendously high level. Look at how nonchalant he makes this play, but this is not an easy play for most point guards in the league, much less, again, a seven-footer. Coming down in transition, one dribble, balls in his right hand, just zipping a pass to Aaron Gordon, who's got a nice little pinch-in flare screen from Jeff Green right in his shot pocket again to create a corner three. Nuggets run pretty much the entire offense again through him. Here after timeout play, Mike Malone is great at drawing up little sets. And here we see the little 5-4 pick and roll again. As Zubac, they try to kind of switch this one. But since Zubac is going over the screen and Aaron Gordon sets it at this kind of low angle, now he's already behind the defense and Joker's just going to put it perfectly over the top to get Aaron Gordon a dunk. Perfect execution. And again, the guy reads the offense reads the defense, excuse me, better than pretty much anybody in the entire NBA. Here, look at him calling for the outlet. He wants he's the point guard. He handles the ball, brings it up the overwhelming majority of the time for Denver. Here he's gonna play out an early drag screen with Jeff Green. Finds him again over the top behind the defense. Goaltending was the correct call here as Zubac blocked that out from inside the cylinder. Here we see once again Clippers continually trying to switch or go under or whatever, but Jokic, excuse me, just reading it, seeing his defender underneath and popping that from deep behind the screen. He's got deep three-point range, deep range on all his turnarounds, and that's what makes defenses have to close out hard to him, and that's what opens up these kind of finishes. Even though he looks slow as heck and lumbering, it's really so crafty with his footwork, attacking, little closeout. So even though Zubac isn't that far away from him, if he gets the ball at this top right here, like Joel Embiid, he's almost impossible to guard. Just going to give you a little right foot jab, drive to his left, get through a little gap in the defense, protect the ball, be strong with it. Nobody's able to strip him trying to get through these gaps right here. An inside hand, right hand finish on the left side of the basket. Tremendous touch, tremendous finishing ability around the basket. Here we're going to see once again another drive. And oh my god, I mean just look at how easy he makes this look. Zubac, not a terrible big man defender in his own right. But Joker's just going to go right around him as Zubac thinks he's got to play up on the shot. Since he's made a few threes, now again we're just going to read the game, drive the ball, help comes in little slow deceleration stop on a dime. It's a below-the-rim finisher, but he's one of the best in the league at doing so. Here on the offensive glass, keeping it alive, misses the bunny, but stays with it. Picking up one of his trademark techs in the process. Of course, not the world's greatest defender by any stretch of the imagination. Just wanted to put this clip in to show you that certainly still gets targeted a lot on that end. Although he has gotten a lot better, but that's not kind of the skill level that I'm talking about in terms of can you shoot, can you pass, can you dribble. And he can do all of those things with the absolute best of them. Here's the Tom Brady aspect of it again in this delay set, common five out in the NBA here. Uh... Reed is just going to slip this screen, and again, Jokic just sees this beautifully. He is such a tremendous passer out of that top of the key action, finding Reed for a reverse finish around the basket. Here, as we see, Jokic set a high ball screen. Once again, he's going to catch it at the high post, and like I said earlier, if you are ever on the high side of your man or overplaying in the slightest, that's an automatic back cut for Denver, and there is no better back cut passer. Puts it with perfect touch right over the top to Monty Morris here, who again blows the layup. Think about it. He had 10 assists in this game, should have easily had close to 15 his teammates hadn't blown a few layups here. Morris is going to finish the layup, and I put this one in to show you that 
this just want to explain why this is open. So this isn't Morris, really good player, okay, good finish, good move, but this is open because of the threat. Zubac so worried about Jokic popping, so you see he's gonna fake like he, he's gonna act like he's stopping the ball, which is his job. But he's so worried about Jokic on the pop that he leaves a little bit too early, and that's when Morris does a great job again, kind of just freezing his defender, seeing Zubac leave early, and now he's free to go to the rim. So again, even though Jokic just doesn't show up as anything more than a screen assist in the box score, which isn't even in the box score, he really creates this by his ability to shoot the basketball, opens up so much for his teammates, so much offense out of setting his ball screens. As mentioned, being able to knock down free throws, 14 of 16 from the line in this game, 79% on the season. Here he is again using that ability to make shots, to set up everything else, a huge basket here. Denver down three. Again, you see the slow shot fake up above his head. Defender goes for it. Now we're going to drive, get into this tight gap, gather, foul, continuation, finish. Easy, easy money. Big time play. As you see, we're going to see, again, the stroke, pure, how many bigs can shoot at this kind of 80% clip from the free throw line. Hugely important, especially when you get hacked as often as he does. Here we're going to see... Late game, need a basket, down to 53 seconds to go. He's handling again in a pick and roll. All he's going to do is reject the screen, right to left cross. Look at that ability to handle the ball for a big fella. The spin move back to his left shoulder, protecting the ball with that left hand, left shoulder, and using the glass for the tough finish. 35 seconds to go here, still down two. Step up screen, that same play. Almost has the shot behind, but Kennard does a pretty good job hedging. Okay, no worries. Going to now hold it out as a grapefruit for Barden, who senses once again Kennard trying to deny an overplay. So now Joker again. Simple play, easy play, just makes the right read 99% of the time. Basketball genius. Here we go to overtime. How many bigs, again, come off these flex screens? His ability to move purely and, and fluidly off these screening actions is so beautiful to watch. Misses the easy one there, but again, great hands, keeping it alive. Gets so many tips to himself and to teammates. Here, let's see, again, like I said, not the world's greatest defender, but he's gotten a lot better. He's got great instincts here. Seeing that Reggie Jackson's eye in the pocket pass getting the hand down, kind of baiting that pass, and then getting his right hand right there to slap it away. And then he's off to the races, which is a little slow-mo for him, but stays with the play as Morris misses. And you see, again, that controlled tip around the rim that he's so good at. I already did a video on these this last minute of overtime, which is absolutely wild, so I'm not going to spend too much time rehashing the final plays in overtime here. But this pass in particular, an unbelievably beautiful read. I broke it down in the video up at top so you can see the real magic that went into making a play like that. But thanks for watching. Thumb up, subscribe. Think about it. Is the Joker the most skilled offensive player ever? I, I think he's going to have a case at the end of his playing career. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks again for watching. Scott with Brian.